one thing I have to show you that I'm really excited about is this volunteer here, this Huperzia. It's not a fern, it's a lycophyte, um, but I have tried to grow these and they've all died. I've tried with three or four different individuals. This one's a volunteer. It just found this little area on the humid, shady backside of that log and it grew there by itself. And uh, so I have to take a lesson from that. It, and if I'm going to try to grow more of those in the future, I'm going to have to try to find uh, s some sort of micro environment that's very similar to that. But I think that's my favorite volunteer, but I've got lots of other volunteers also. So that Huperzia is an example of something that found a very specialized microhabitat. But uh, there are other ferns that seem to pop up all over the place and are volunteers. And I noticed that at your place up at high elevations mm -hmm. there. We're, we'll, we'll emphasize those ferns when we go to your house, I think. But in those rock walls that you have leading down to the river, you've got all sorts of volunteers all over that. I know you didn't plant those I there. Didn't. So. I never planted them, and I think that's a good lesson. They're telling you what their environment is and what they like. Mm -hmm. And if we can recreate that in, a, again, a landscape setting mm -hmm. and encourage them to establish themselves, that would be awesome. Yes. So <laughs> shall I show you my most common volunteer? That'd be great. Okay, it's this crazy asplenium. This fern, I think I've only planted one of them, but they show up on the outside surface of every hanging basket that I've got. And whether it's one of these coconut fiber ones or one of the moss ones. And I don't know if it's the spores that come in and then make the gametophyte or if the gametophytes somehow come in. It must be the spores come in, then they, then they do their fertilization thing and then the gametophytes start. Because if I just have a little hanging basket somewhere, it will soon be covered on the outside with these guys. But it won't interfere with what's growing on the inside of the basket? I don't think it even gets in there. I think it just establishes itself on the outside surface and grows out. Can you take then those volunteers and replant them into another kind of basket so that you just have Probably. that mixed with something else? Probably. Hmm. You mean have it coming out the top? Yes. I guess. And could you, do these like, are they specific to a shady area or a sunny area? Because if they're that prolific in volunteering, they might be a wonderful fern to use. They don't like baking hot sun, but they're pretty good. They can stand a lot. And Sunshade. Yeah, and they, they like water. Mm -hmm. um, if, you, if they don't get enough water, some of the fronds get brown and they don't look so pretty. But... And then they reproduce like crazy. Look at those. It's in a splenium, so it's got those um, those long uh, diagonal sori. But that's a great volunteer. So, you know, if we had anything that was hanging with any sort of uh, texture like cocoa fiber mm -hmm. or moss, it These would just wolves. be covered with that. Well, that would be quite beautiful, too, because then you get this nice effect of the bottom mm -hmm. with one kind of fern and the top with your other kinds of multiple plants that you put in. Yeah, yeah, I love the volunteers. You know, there's a pot sitting here on a moist log, mm -hmm. and the sun usually comes from that direction, so it's a little bit protected. But, you know, I obviously didn't plant any of those things, and they're just popping out of that interface between the pot and the top of the log. And mm -hmm. again, I think it's gametophytes that somehow start there and then they just grow into a fern. And then you have a couple of different things in here as well. Yeah, well those I put. Okay. I'm pretty sure I stuck that in there. But I didn't put any of those guys there. And so there's a Thalipterus, that's a, an Asplenium. That's only going to happen in the wetter areas. What I've noticed is some of the logs 
end up having little mushroom colonies on mm -hmm. them. So that definitely indicates that it, that's getting a fair amount of moisture. Well, I think it also depends on the type of log and what kind of uh, decomposition you have yeah. going on there. Because if you have something that just rots beautifully, you're going to have a wonderful setting for lots of ferns to grow. Yes. Aren't rotting logs wonderful? They are they're the best. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great propagation material. Yeah, for sure, <laughs> for sure. So we're over here on the other side of my porch, and this is another area where I get runoff from the roof. And a lot of these are volunteers along here. The downside of volunteers it's, is that sometimes you get these invasives coming in. And this thing right here looks beautiful and wonderful. This is actually an Asian invasive. So Robin Moran told me to get rid of this. And I've got a couple more uh, in different areas around. Around. Especially before it starts to send out spores, right? Right. right. So um, generally, I'm all in favor of volunteers, but there are a couple that we have to look out for. And I don't know if you get this up in your uh, mountain areas. I, I need to write to Robin and find out more about this particular invasive. But there aren't that many invasive ferns, and this apparently is one of them. It would be good to find out and start the elimination campaign. Yes, yes. That's part of our plan. Get rid of the invasives, the introduced ones, the non-natives, and promote all of these beautiful natives. Nat exactly. Okay. <laughs> so that will be the deal. All right. We'll make that. <laughs> That's our plan. Our we'll make it happen. <laughs>